Okay, well, welcome back to the shed. Here we are again. I'm uh, going to show you how I'm going to put these formers together. We're going to be working on F14. What I did was I cut a couple of uh, sheets of 4 inch by 8 inch balsa to the approximate length. And what I'm going to do is glue them together and get them ready to uh, cut out that form. Okay, first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of my edges square. And what I did, I made up this little, uh, and you see it or not, but I took a piece of right angle and put uh, sandpaper on the uh, inside. So what I'll do is I'll run that across a couple of times on both mating edges. I'll tape one side, glue it, and uh, let's see what we get. All right, let's see. I'll put this thing down here. hope you can see it. And it got a little fishy deal right there, but I'm going to clean up these edges. Give me a nice smooth edge on both sides. <clears throat> I got them mated and marked. Got my arrows lined up which side I go to go. Nice clean edge. I don't really like the factory edge. I mean, sometimes it's square, sometimes it's not, but. I know my edge is going to be nice and flush. Nice. Sits in there sweet. Let me make sure this is being caught on the camera to some extent. How about there? That's a little better. All right. So now I'm going to take a piece of my tape. I had some blue painter's tape around here, but I didn't know where it's at. So. All right. Making sure that I still got my square edges. I'm going to take the tape. Stretch out a piece, about the right size, put it on one edge, okay, try not to get any wrinkles in it, flip it, make sure I got my arrows the same way, so these are these two edges are the, the edges I put down on my uh, 90 degree deal, and I'm going to try to butt these bad boys up as close as I possibly can here. Well, you see, and then put the tape down. Sort of act as a hinge when I glue it. So I have a nice tight seam right there. And like I said the last time, I wasn't really... I, I know I can buy this in the right length, but I've been reading a lot about the way balsa is made, and as the diameter of the tree increases, the wood at the far ends where we would have the... Uh, <coughs> we would have the uh, bark if they have bark, I've never seen a balsa tree before, but nevertheless, whatever it is, they say it gets very punky and it gets soft. And so I decided that you know, the way these glues are made nowadays, that probably the wood will break way before the way before the uh, joint will ever break. All right, let me get some glue out here. Pop out my little deal. ton of these things to do. I don't know how many formers. I'll kind of count the formers. I'm going to bend it right at the seam. Make sure I can get some glue out of this bad boy. Okay, perfect. Run my B down the thing here. Kind of like a medium. Try to get a nice covering. Over. I'll do some sanding. But, oh well, that's life. If you don't like sanding, I guess this ain't the job. I like to give it a little rub across it here. Okay, now that's, that's a nice tight seam right there. Get a couple pieces of scrap I got laying around here. I can already smell that working. Now I use my favorite weights. I've got a board sitting right over here. Get a couple of my favorite weights. My favorite weights are, put a little board on, batteries batteries for my cordless saws and drills and let that sit for a let that sit for a few minutes probably don't even take a few minutes but nevertheless that's how what I do with that little plug great and I lost that that was a nice little uh, had a nice little uh, brad that went down inside of my super glue but I don't see it, so oh well. I gotta find another one. 
I actually like to use put the brad inside of the hole as opposed to putting the cap back on simply because I don't know I think I don't know caps don't seal or whatever but every time that I don't do that I go back and get my my glue and it's I gotta mess around by putting the uh, well let me find another brad over here I gotta mess around and put cut the top of it off or whatever the case is all right we got another one got hundreds of them over here <coughs> all right put that bad boy back up inside of there perfect and wait a couple more seconds it don't take long and then what i'll do is i'll get some double back tape and then i will put my form my stencil that came with the plans one of the sheets was a whole sheet of nothing but the uh, formers which just cut them out and I'll put these on top of here and take them over to jigsaw rough cut them and then use my sanding and uh, we'll have another one done here's f 15 is already done I just haven't cut out the center of it yet that's all got to get cut out and I'm not going to cut that out because I'm a little bit concerned about having I'm going to cut it out but not right now I'm just a little bit concerned about the uh, and it's the one I'm sitting around for weeks and weeks, possibly weeks, with this weak edge right here. Kind of rough on stuff in here. But uh, <coughs> that's the way it is. Right, these are probably pretty close to done. It don't take long for this super glue to seat up. And what happens, I, there's the other one. It sort of peels the back of it off the tape, but uh, well, I just sand it down. I know masking tape works better. I had some blue tape in here someplace, but I don't know where it went. Well, let's see what we got. Put my back trees back so I know where they're at next time. Get my little board. There's my little heart in it. That off to the side. And there we go. Pretty much. I got her done. It don't take long. It don't take long. Now get my sand and block. I'm going to sand it right down there. Any wet glue that's in there, there you guys know. That's a nice filler, too. That glue is a little tacky, and you get this sand up and uh, this uh, dust up inside of that seam. It ain't ever gonna break. A nice, nice, nice solid. Nice solid deal. Yeah, take the tape off the back. No, oh, this one ain't as bad as the other one. Not too bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. There you go. And you guys are saying, ah, oh, man, you should go buy the nine inch stuff. Use one piece. Don't be gluing that together, but I don't know. Like I said, I, uh, I've i been reading about how that... I guess there's a reason why there's a mark right across each one of these at four inches. So the guy who made this, he obviously, either back in the 80s when this uh, plane was designed, I think it was back in 1980 he put it on uh, RC Magazine. I think I looked that up the other day, so. But if you go online and search RC airplane plans, this thing will come up 150 times. So it's either a popular plane or he's got pool and getting his stuff out front. But it's been around for a long time, I know that. Yeah, that'll all come up. But the other thing is, too, most of it will get cut off. Because once I put my uh, glue and cut this out, Half of that will be gone. But of course, I'll use that entire piece for another former. So I'm just going to put this bad boy on top of here like that. And uh, just use some of this cheap old tape. I tried gluing it with a glue stick. I tried mixing some white glue down a little bit. Water in it. I couldn't get it off. Couldn't get it off. And then tried to separate the wood. Glued the wood together. Couldn't get it off. Went on RC Universe. How do you do it? Uh, use double back tape. I, got, I should have known that, but nevertheless, I didn't. Sometimes you just. Sometimes the easiest things in the world are the hardest things to remember. I mean, it, it kind of works. I, I don't know. I, somebody was saying something about a 3M product out there that works better. Um, I can't remember if it was 85 or whatever the case it was, but. Just run it over the edges a little bit like this. Cut the ends off. I don't really care. I think this stuff cost me a dollar for a whole roll, so I'm not trying to skimp on it. Let's put it that way. 
I'll put a couple more out and then I'll get it set. Once I get it set, then I'll go back and I will, uh, once I get this set, I will go back and uh, cut this excess tape off. Or maybe I'll have to put more tape on it, I don't know. Get the edges. What, the one, the first one I did right there, it seemed like all I was doing was putting double back tape on it to keep the form down or keep these stencil down on it. All right, let's tack this bad boy down real quick. Should go to the ends, but I'll be all right. Make sure it's nice and flat. Now we'll stick on there pretty good. Obviously the edges ain't down, and I got a nice. Is what I want to do. That one's coming off. Got a little bit of a, a ridge right there. All right, so that's how I do it. Now I'm going to go around the edges with this tape. And I'm sure everybody out there is going, why don't you just use that 3M spray stuff? It just goes right on. You put on top of that and off you go. Well, I went to Lowell's to try to find some of that 3M spray stuff. They didn't have any of it. I guess I can order it online, but then i got to wait and wait and wait. And I'm not one of those people who like to wait around. So, I mean, I'll probably end up ordering some, but for right now I'm just going to go ahead and do this. In goes this piece. Well, basically, I'm just tacking it down, holding it. Holding her into place. There we go. Now, I'll take it over to the uh, scroll saw, and I'll just rough cut out actually the paper. Show me this stuff here. This stuff is brutal, man. That stuff's brutal. It is brutal. One thing I noticed about when I was using the uh, sand in it, the stuff will actually melt. It's a hell of a mess. Get some of this off of here. All right. That's pretty good. All right, let's go over to the uh, jigsaw and just rough cut this out. And then I'm going to put it on my disc sander. And that's what we got right now. So we'll just rough cut this out. And then I'll sand it. This was kind of a pain, but I came up with my little Dremel deal here. Let's bring it over and show it to you. Made my little Dremel. I got my Dremel mounted underneath there, if you can see it. Yeah, you got it. This is one of those redneck builds, and it, it worked pretty good. I just turned my Dremel on, and I got the edges done. I got one of those uh, sanding deal. I cut a, I don't know, it was three, three quarters maybe. 9 sixteenths, I don't know. Whatever hole diameter was to let that go through and just clamped it to there. Put a couple screws in to hold the, uh, so they're flush. And it works pretty good. All right, let's go over to this jigsaw and see if we can get this bad boy uh, cut up. Let's move a lot of stuff over here first at the jigsaw. Yeah, that's one thing about this place. It is smell, smell. But that's what it is. Alrighty, there we go. So I'm going to rough cut that out with the jigsaw. See if I can put this down someplace where you can see what we're doing. Got a couple clamps holding this. Uh, this is high tech business going on here, boys. High tech business. Yeah, that might look all right. All right, let's turn this bed on. Just really rough cut this out. So we, I just roughed it off. That's all I did. Just take some of the edges off of it. Now what I'm going to do is move it to this side. My homemade disc sander. I don't know where I came up with this motor. But uh, 
I don't even know. I was just sitting here one day and I was thinking I need a disc sander and I had this motor. Variable speed. I put a dimmer switch on it. Kind of neat. And it works like a champ. This came off of the wheel came off of a a buffer I had sitting around here I wasn't using and believe it enough the arbor matched right up and I screwed it on and it's still on there so let me uh, sand for a little bit and uh, we'll get back after I finish doing a little bit of the sanding and I'm gonna put you on pause and uh, we'll see you in a little bit 